So very happy to be here with Bunny Drukey, who is having an absolute fantastic day. Uh, Bunny, first off, thank you for your time. I, I can't imagine what this day has to be like for you three months in the making. Oh, it's an awesome day. It is just an unbelievably happy day. Tell me uh, first and foremost, uh, what has this three months been like now that you're able to talk with your son being home? Um, was there ever a moment in this whole process where, frankly, you worried that perhaps there could be a different outcome, that he might not make it back home to you? You know, Stephen, the, when I took him to the um, airport in Atlanta and I watched him walking towards security, and I realized that um, that might be the last time I ever saw my son because he was going into a, a war zone. And I know that soldiers don't always make it home. Um, it was it was hard, but I am so proud of him. And I was then, and I knew that he felt called to go to Ukraine and that if he died over there, he was dying for a cause that he believed in. and. I believed that it is a very just and good cause. And so I had to be willing to let him go. Uh, there were also times, especially recently with the a new uh, Ukrainian army doing their counteroffensive and doing it so successfully, uh, but it's still the closer they got to where we thought the boys were being held, the more danger the boys were being put in. And um, I, figured that there would be one of three outcomes. They would either um, be moved again, or they might be uh, left, abandoned there at the prison, and then they would be liberated by the Ukrainian army coming through, you know, like, like the uh, concentration camps back during World War II. Or it could be that the Russians or their cronies uh, decided to kill the boys. And I, I knew that that was a chance. So we were trying to be very cautiously optimistic. And, um, uh, you know, it's something that, that mothers of soldiers have to face. So, so yeah, I had some low times, but. Over the course of this last hundred days or so, I know you had begun to become uh, very close with the State Department in terms yes. of discussing this whole process that's been going on now for quite some time to make this day happen. With that said, did you, did you have any idea that, that today or this next few days may be the day that this happened? No, no idea at all. Um, I think, you know, the State Department had kind of said that they they knew that things were uh, were progressing and uh, they weren't at liberty to say anything. Uh, so we felt like there was something going on, but I know that they were surprised today because the contact that we have had at the State Department that has checked in with us almost every single day, week after week after week, left this morning to go on a two week vacation. And <laughs> there's no way he would have left if he had known this was going to happen. And the, the one he had put in charge of our case was the one who got to tell us the good news. Um, but but I, it, I just, I'm sorry for him because he worked so hard, so hard to get them freed. And, and then he didn't get to tell us. <laughs> So, Bunny, take me to that moment. What was it like? What, what was going on? And where were you when you got the phone call this morning? Well, well this morning, it was uh, around 1030-ish, between 10 and 1030. And I was reading a book about trucks to my youngest grandson, my three-year-old. And he loves trucks. So he was really into the book. And I was making all the noises. And my phone rang. And I looked. And it said, Saudi Arabia. And I thought, I don't know anybody in Saudi Arabia. Um, but I thought, you know, I think I'm going to take the call. What the heck? If worse comes to worse, I can just hang up and block the call. And I'm so glad I took it because this woman introduced herself, said she was with the U.S. Embassy there in Saudi Arabia. And I wondered, well, what has that got to do with me or with Alex? Maybe it's about Alex. And she said, that uh, she verified that I was who I said I was. And then she said, I have your son standing 
right beside me and I'm going to hand the phone to him. And I was just stunned. And I, I said, Alex? And he said, um, hi, mama, it's your favorite child. <laughs> which which um, it's a running joke with him and his siblings. And I said, well, you'll just go to any length to make that true, won't you? And he laughed too. And he said, um, I'm free. And I said, what? Because I thought I couldn't have heard him right. And he goes, I'm free. And I said, free? And he said, yes, I'm free. And I thought, I'm not even sure that I, I understand that word, you know? And, and I said, you're free? And he said, yes, I'm free. And I said, well, what about Andy? Because for us, it was the two of them. It was Alex and Andy, or Andy and Alex, and, and never, you know, and we wanted them both home. And he said, yes, Andy is here with me. He's free too. And I said, that's wonderful. Has he talked to Joy, his fiance? And Alex said, no, he can't remember Joy's phone number because, you know, he's young and yeah. you're just pushing on the phone, just pushing. No one name. remembers numbers anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I said, don't worry, I've got her number. So I looked it up and gave it to him so that he could. Um, I know I heard him ask the woman if he could have a piece of paper to write it down. So, um, uh, you know, he, he said that they were going to take him to the hospital and just to check him out, make sure everything was okay, but that he felt good. And, um, uh, you know, that it's a, a long, it's a 14 hour flight to get from Saudi Arabia here to the U.S. And then he would have to fly on home, you know, to Alabama. Because uh, I, I imagine that they will fly them into some major airport. Um, so, they want to make sure that the boys are well hydrated and they're in good enough shape to withstand that, that trip. And I don't know how long a trip it was from Ukraine to Saudi Arabia. I don't know when they arrived. Uh, Alex said he really couldn't tell me the details of everything over the phone. But he would be glad to you know, share them with me when he got home. And that was just such a, a wonderful sentence to hear, you know, when I get home and um, so um, we, di we didn't talk too long because he needed to get off the phone so that um, Andy could call Joy. Was so, that tough to, to, to get off the phone? I would imagine you would just want to keep talking and talking and talking, right? Um, well, my mind immediately went to, oh my goodness, I need to wash the sheets and, and get them put on the bed. And, and I need to go and buy a roast because he's going to want roasted potatoes when he comes home. And, and I need to call my sister and let her know. And I need to thank all these people. I mean, my mind was just going mm -hmm. miles an hour. And, um, and I had every confidence. He says, now, Mama, if you get another call from Saudi Arabia, it might be me. I might have a chance to call you again. So uh, I didn't feel like it was a one-shot chance like I did when he would call when he was in captivity, because I never knew when I'd hear from him again. You mentioned captivity and, and never knowing when you would hear from him again. It seemed like every time when I talked to you throughout this that you did seem confident, right? That you had a faith that he would come back. Yes. Where what do you what do you credit that to? Where did that come from? And did it, you know, did it ever waver? I never wavered in my confidence that Alex is strong, he's brave, he's well trained, he's stubborn. He likes a challenge. I knew there was nothing that they could throw at him that he couldn't take. And that he would be doing everything in his power to get back home. Because that's what you do when you're a POW. And so I, I had every confidence in that. And I also um, really, you know, to know that people around the world are praying for you and someone you love and the situation it's very um empowering and it's very humbling and i i knew that whatever the outcome that it was okay everything was going to be okay you mentioned people all around the world 
Uh, this was certainly a case uh, that got a lot of attention through your efforts in a large part. And, and I say that to ask, how important was it when this first happened in your mind to get attention and for there to be uh, attention on your son as well as Andy? Uh, and, and what part do you think that played in them coming home? I think it was the most powerful weapon that we had. Um, first of all, we wanted to get it out because we knew that if, if we got their names out there and we made it known, there was no way that Russia would be able to hide them or, um, you know, you hear people disappearing and you never hear what happened to them. We knew that the more we stirred it up, then the um, less they could hide them away. And if it had not been for the press being willing to keep our story out there and keep their names out there, I don't think we'd be sitting here today discussing Alex and Andy coming home. I, it, it really was so important that, um, and we felt such support from the press, from print media to television to you know, it, online, it, it just, there's, there's no way that I can ever express my gratitude uh, for, well, my gratitude to or my admiration for our American press. And I feel so, so lucky to be in a country where we do have that freedom of the press. It was our most effective weapon, I believe. One of the things we've heard in, in some cases involving people, right, who, who could be the, the subject of a hostage switch or something like that is, is that, you know, I've read of, of people being told, hey, you know, kind of lay low. I, I only bring that up to ask, was there ever any one telling you guys, hey, maybe you shouldn't talk about this so much, you know, as we try to work back channels? Was that ever something that you faced uh, at, through this process? That's a really interesting question because I had always been told that i had heard that um but when it happened to us we found ourselves in that situation then um when i brought it up to our contact at the state department he reminded me of the first amendment which is freedom of speech and he said i can't really tell you what you can say and what not to say and i said then all i ask is do you think it would hurt them for us to go public and he said i don't see how i can't promise it will help but i don't see how it could hurt and we took that to mean that it would be okay so we we decided to step out in faith and make it public and um there have been occasionally times when the state department might ask us to sit on something for a little while, but they never told us that we had to. It was mm -hmm. our choice. But they were so wonderful to work with that we didn't mind. You know, we wanted we wanted to be partners with the State Department, not enemies of. And we all felt like they made us feel like we were part of their team, and and that we were all working together. It it was a wonderful feeling one final chapter exists in this, right? Which is you guys being reunited. Uh, have you have any, any idea or, or some of an idea as to when that might happen, when he might be stateside and then also in Alabama? Well, we're hoping that it will be in the next two to three days. It just really depends on how they check out at the hospital. And um, I know they're being monitored and, uh, you know, just, to, and I want them to be healthy. So I, I don't mind waiting. Uh, the the embassy there has been great about keeping in touch with us all day today, uh, just to help us uh, to think about working out the logistics of getting them home. And, and uh, they also wanted to reassure us that while we're waiting for them to come home, that they have, um, once they're released from the hospital, they have an apartment that they stock the refrigerator with food. Um, they have hot showers. They gave them clean clothes. They've got real beds to sleep in. You know, they're they're just treating them as like royalty, and um, uh, so that that's been very reassuring.
certainly been an odyssey, I imagine, for both of them. I wonder, you know, you mentioned Alex looking at himself as he is, as a soldier, right? And, 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 and you mentioned the escalating violence over there. Could you ever imagine that Alex would consider going back to Ukraine, given everything that he's gone through these last three months? Knowing Alex, I can't rule that out. I hope that he will stay here until the fighting's over. And then um, I would not be surprised at all if he returned to Ukraine to help them rebuild. It was something that he had mentioned several times before he was captured. And I know he, he loves Ukraine and fell in love with Ukrainian people. And from the ones that I've met that are here in Alabama, I had no idea we had such a big Ukrainian community, but we have plugged into them. And, and they're everything that Alex said, warm, friendly, brave, feisty, determined. You know, I, I can see why he wants to be there to help them rebuild their country. So I don't know, it's up to Alex, I don't know really what all he's been through and, and how this may have changed him. But I would not be surprised if he goes back to Ukraine at some point, um, hopefully to rebuild. Chapter in a different story. Well, That's certainly right. thank, thank you for sharing your story with us, Bunny, and we certainly look forward to seeing you and your son reunited. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you right. so much. Thanks.